Hello friends and thank you for getting back to the channel. Today is a unique day. This is the last video I'm going to produce for this year. Going to take some uh, short vacation to rest, think about new content. But the topic of today is very important and I'm sure it's for all of you. So many people ask me, how can we get into cybersecurity space without an experience? So I thought maybe to do the ultimate guide about it. So we are living in exciting, unique, and also challenging times. COVID-19 is still with us and impacting our lives day by day. Uh, most of us are still working remotely. Uh, we, we shop more online, we gather more information online, we learn online uh, more. Our lives move to the internet in, in some uh, essence, much more than before the COVID-19. And it also means that the internet has changed. And I'm not speaking about metaverse. We will take it in a separate session. But I'm speaking about the applications that are better utilized or more utilized today out there. If in the past the applications were hosted only in the traditional data center, today they are scattered everywhere. They can be in the traditional data center, they can be in the private cloud, they can be in the public cloud, and they can be in the multi-cloud. It means that applications become more public-facing. Applications become more centric. But it also, at the same time, creates a problem or a challenge. Because if in the past you had limited locations to protect your applications, how do you protect them today, where they are everywhere? There is no perimeter uh, anymore. So how do you protect things you cannot see? The bad news is that the malicious actors out there understand it as well. And that's why it's much more lucrative for them to compromise the applications, extort people, steal data, and impact our life. Thus, the cyberspace became a breeding ground for malicious actors. And we see much more attacks and malicious events across the world. And these are alarming news for all of us because all of us have shared responsibility here as individuals and as organizations. And definitely this creates a need for much more people to assist, get into the, this arena and support and help to protect our all safety in cyber. So today's topic is for everyone. Actually, everyone that is in, interested in technology, that thought maybe to do some shift into the cyberspace, that has some concerns and questions, that not sure that he can or she can uh, move into this uh, uh, space without experience. So I will try to help you and give you my tips, my guidance on how to do it, because definitely it is possible. Getting into cybersecurity is a good career choice, at least I think so. So let's see what it involves. Many hiring managers look for people having considerable amount of knowledge of cybersecurity skills. With the increase in open cloud platforms, the demand for such professionals have increased. With the right certification and knowledge, you will be able to secure better salary position. Following out some of the ways you can secure a cybersecurity job and start a career with no experience. First and foremost, in my view, is getting aligned with industry needs and maintain it until you find a job. Job applicants get a hard time finding a job. To start a career in cybersecurity, you must listen, in my mind at least, to podcasts, read specific blogs that are related to cybersecurity X news, roles, and many other subcategories of cybersecurity. Since cybersecurity is by default a broad term, there are many areas and special blogs dedicated to each area, like application security, vulnerability management, intrusion detection, penetration testing, network and infrastructure security, data governance, risk and compliance, digital forensic, incident response, and many others. You should explore them and know where to put the efforts. And I have few to recommend you. First one is Daniel Meisler. And Daniel Meisler is one of my favorite. He's a cybersecurity expert, he's a consultant, he's a writer, and he has an amazing blog 
where he publishes his essays and news and definitely many of his podcasts. The second one is Graham Cluley, and he's an industry uh, expert uh, as well, working McAfee in the past, but in 2013, I think, he started to work for himself. He has an amazing as, as well blog where he writes about cybersecurity news, uh, tricks, schemes, st strategies, and gives a lot of tips all around. Very easy and very knowledgeable person, really recommended. The third one is IT Security Guru, and this is a daily news uh, magazine that provides latest uh, news, use cases, webinar, analysis on many of the, the hacking things and malicious events that are happening all around the globe. Always good to listen, to read, and uh, get the, the knowledge from there. So the fourth one is Security Weekly, and this is featuring the work of industry veteran Paul Asadorian, uh, that is also a guru in cybersecurity. It also features podcasts and webcasts and, and a lot of things that definitely are interesting that you can learn from. Really recommended. Last but not least is Hacker News. And Hacker News is definitely the place everyone wants to, to be. They claim to have 8 million readers. They speak about daily hacking uh, uh, news and cyber security news uh, in depth. Definitely a lot of knowledge, mountains of uh, information. So it's your go-to site when you want to, to know anything that happens around the world in cybersecurity. My second tip is to gain basic knowledge in computing and security. And one way definitely that is very common now uh, to do it is through certifications that became a benchmark for all employers. So which certification do I recommend? I think there are four that are a must but not necessarily at the same uh, time. You can start with one or two and then proceed from there later. The first one is CompTIA Network Plus and CompTIA Network Plus help develops a career in IT infrastructure covering troubleshooting, configuring and managing networks. Networking in my view is definitely the basic knowledge you need to know even before security. Via certification of Network Plus, you can become a network administrator or a network field technician, an IT consultant, a network field engineer, an help desk technician, a system engineer, network analyst, and so on. The second certification, also from CompTIA, it is Security Plus. And this is an entry-level certification. It teaches you core skills needed for a wide variety of roles cloud security, vulnerability assessment, overall security posture of IoT devices, mobile communication security, and few of these kinds of skills. The certification also deals with making students understand the core regulation when it comes to security. Immediate response reactions are also presented to the candidates of this certification. You can become a cloud security engineer, security administrator, software security developer, and such jobs. The third one is GIAC, Security Essential Certification, or GSEC. This certification is also designed for entry-level professionals who wish to make a career in cybersecurity. It enlightens the participants with the background of cybersecurity and why do we need professional in it. Once you get the certificate, you will have the following skills. Active defense, network security, cloud security, cryptography, and incident response. For this certification, there is no set of specific requirements. However, the knowledge of computer is a must. The third tip is gain hands-on infrastructure knowledge. And one good way to do it is through the Linux Foundation Certified Engineer as a hands-on course. And the Linux Certified Engineer makes sure that the course is an entire hands-on course with a genius certification at the end. It is important to know once you have taken the exam, you will be expected to run server computing, maintain virtualization and support services. Many professionals will have to look into integrated applications like Unix and Windows system communications with Linux. So this certification has the credential. 
At first level is the Linux Foundation Certified System Administrator, or LFCS. And next is LF Linux Foundation Certified Engineer, LFCE. The engineer level converts advanced topics and practices than system admin credentials. The fourth one is get your resume and LinkedIn ready. And I think the best way to build your resume for those of you that do not have experience in that is through LinkedIn, because LinkedIn provides a structural uh, profile that follows the required steps to build this uh, uh, resume, which later on you can export out to provide it to potential uh, organization that you want to work for. So here are some essential tips I collected for you and I will leave another link with more details for more tips on how to build your LinkedIn uh, profile. First one is create a summary that stands out. Recruiters do not have the time to read your entire profile from top to bottom. They read your headline, the summary, and quickly decide if you are relevant for the position, and if yes, they are hiring you, if not, not. So it's important to get your LinkedIn summary right. A good LinkedIn summary section includes the following information. Your years of experience in your current field, a list of your most relevant skills, this is usually includes art skills, tools you have used, programming, frameworks, etc. Your current job title, what you have excelled at, any relevant accomplishments, what you are passionate about, what kind of role you are looking uh, for. Second one is keywords, keywords, and I will say it again, keywords. You need to include the right keywords, all of your profile, headline summary, work experience, and the skill sections. This tells the LinkedIn algorithm that your profile is very relevant to the specific keyword used. Third is include most, if not all, of your licenses and certifications. If you have certifications that are highly relevant for your role or the desired position, you should include them on your LinkedIn profile. Fourth, get some recommendation. Think of all of the people in your professional crowd you are close to and have had positive interactions with. Contact them and ask them for a recommendation on your LinkedIn profile. Fifth is pick the right profile photo. And first of all, yes, it's important to have one. Members with profile photo get up to 21 times more views. You don't have to be wearing your best suit, but don't just be sporting your favorite worn-up uh, tee either. Check out what other people in your professions are wearing and go for something similar. Make sure you look neat and clean. Go for a friendly look, not too stern, not too goofy. A profile picture accentuates your face, so make it close up, not a whole body picture. Your profile picture has to be recent. Don't rely on the photo from high school, no matter how good you look in it. Quality is key. Low resolution pictures are a no-go. Think six, optimize your experience section. And arguably your experience section is the most important part of your LinkedIn profile. After all, your experience is the number one factor on whether you are qualified for any given job or not. Next. Write in first person. Guys, this is very important. For some reason, some people on LinkedIn use the third person when writing about themselves on their profiles. And we are not talking about famous people who have a page and someone who wrote it for them. We are talking about regular people with regular jobs. Things like, oh, Josh is a grade A cybersecurity professional with over 15 years of experience in. That's a big no. Stick to the first person. Your LinkedIn profile is supposed to sound personal and sincere. The third person expression sounds more fake and pompous. Use numbers and data to emphasize accomplishment. Compare these two work experience entries. I did sales at company X versus I closed over 200,000 in sales deals and company X in 2021. Which one do you think is more compelling for the recruiter? 
Exactly. Throughout your profile, use numbers and data to emphasize your achievement. This will allow you to seriously stand out from the rest of the candidates. My fifth tip is interview preparation. And there are many sites and blogs to do so, from Glassdoor to monster.com and others. And I will leave some links in the description so you can get into. In majority of the cases, the interviewers are asking some common questions. And this definitely can help you uh, to better prepare and answer natively. Tip number six is networking. People you know, but also people you do not know. Meaning it's okay to add people who you haven't met in real life. That's what the platform is for. Feel free to add recruiters, HR specialists, hiring managers in companies you want to work for to your network. This way, you will always be updated with open positions that they might have and you will pop up on top of all other candidates when these recruiters do search for someone with your skill set. Keep in mind though, when adding connection on LinkedIn, it's more courteous to send a connection request with the sort message. Here is an example of what a good connection message looks like. Hello, and state your name. I'm currently on the lookout for a new job and expanding my network with professionals in the HR field, such as yourself. We'll be happy to discuss any opportunities at any point. Best regards, finish with your name. At the same time, definitely, I'm sure, you are familiar with people in the industry. So don't be shy, approach them, ask them if they can help, ask them if they can mentor, be your mentors. And I can tell you from someone that works in this industry for more than 21 years, the best recruitments up to date that I did are coming from friends program. So people that know people that can recommend them, that we gave a lot of opportunities, former knowledge or relationship. So don't be afraid to use it. Don't be shy. It's for your interest. It also shows you are into it. And the last tip, is apply to the job, of course, after all of this uh, preparation. It's definitely a journey. It's not an easy task, but do not give up, never give up. And definitely, if you need some advice, you want to consult, feel free to approach me and I will uh, try to address all of the needs. Thank you for watching. I really enjoyed to do that. So hopefully it was insightful uh, for you uh, as well. Have a great end of year, Merry Christmas, and see you in the next uh, year. Bye.